You slept like garbage, guess what? You get one get out of jail free card. There was a new study that came out of the journal Molecular Metabolism that demonstrated that guess what? If we don't sleep too well, we occasionally can do some high intensity work and actually, for lack of a better term, erase the negative metabolic effects that came from a poor night's sleep. Let's dive in. As someone that has struggled with sleep for, well, since having my three-year-old and now having a 10-month-old, um, I can definitely attest to the fact that it's hard to get up and go and get a good workout in. And I can definitely notice that I don't process food the way that I used to as a result of that. Okay, there's a lot of evidence that demonstrates that when you don't sleep, you don't process carbs as well, you become glucose intolerant, you don't oxidize fat properly, you don't stimulate lipolysis in the same way. The bottom line is we know that when you're sleep deprived, your metabolism changes, okay? It's very easy to identify in a multitude of meta-analysis studies. But this interesting study shows us that we can course correct by literally just getting the mental fortitude to get into the gym or get a high intensity work on, I don't know, your bicycle or whatever for just a short amount of time. Hey, after this video, I do wanna make sure you check out Thrive Market. Just wanna mention this real quick. They're an online membership-based grocery store. They support a lot of the content on this channel, but I'm not just saying that because they support the channel. Like, They are who I use. My pantry is full of goods from Thrive Market. Okay, they have keto goodies, they have fasting goodies, they have paleo, whatever you name it. So you can sort by different diet type within their store and you can sort by, hey, I wanna look at paleo foods and then it categorizes them all. Then you get them delivered right to your door set makes it super easy, super convenient, and super economical. Makes it so much easier for me to just get stuff delivered right to my doorstep than having to go to the grocery store. So there's a special link down below for those of you that are watching this video or subscribe to my channel so that you can get access to them. So check them out after this video. So what did this molecular metabolism study look like? It had three groups. Okay, one group was an eight hour time in bed group, meaning they slept for about eight hours. Okay, and this was in a very controlled laboratory setting, by the way. So then they took a group of other individuals and they had them four hours time in bed. Basically they gave them cruddy sleep. And then they had another group where they give them four hours time in bed, cruddy sleep, but they had them do some high intensity interval training sessions. And we'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Then they measured their glucose tolerance throughout the course of the study. They measured their mitochondrial respiration, like how well their mitochondria, their cells used energy. And then they also measured their sarcoplasmic protein synthesis, how well they recovered and built muscle. So when they look at the high intensity interval training group, all they had them do was 10 times 60 second intervals, three times per week. It wasn't anything crazy, okay? But here's what the results were. This is so fascinating. The group that had four hours of sleep but did not exercise had reductions in their glucose tolerance. They had a deficiency in their mitochondrial respiration. Basically, their mitochondria was not processing energy as well. And what do you know? They had a decrease in protein synthesis at the sarcoplasmic level. They weren't synthesizing protein. They weren't rebuilding. Here's what's super crazy. The four-hour time in bed group that did the hit, those perturbations were not observed. They didn't have the same negative effect. They had the same amount of cruddy sleep but they did some high intensity interval training and it, for lack of a better term, sort of absolved them of the metabolic dysfunction that came as a result of it. Now there's some flaws with this. This isn't in the acute setting, but what that means is maybe in the short term, this will work. I mean, if you were to become chronically sleep deprived, one could argue this isn't gonna be the case. You can't just go through life sleeping four hours a night and training your butt off. But on the off chance that you don't sleep very well, then you wake up in the morning and rather than saying, I didn't sleep well, this is gonna suck, I'm just gonna have to deal with the cruddy metabolism that comes along with it. If it's a little bit of a one-off situation, you can go and you can gather that mental fortitude and go and do 10 rounds of 60 seconds of hit and kind of erase the negative effect of that cruddy sleep. Okay, and if you look at kind of like dive into the research, you see that GLUT4 mRNA expression had changed. Basically the point is it does allude to the fact that if this were to continue on, you wouldn't have the same benefit, okay? Now, when it comes down to sleep, just so that you do know, I used to always kind of trip up about the fact that if I lose sleep, I'm never getting it back. There was also a study that was published out of Penn State that did a really interesting thing. And they did find that if you make up sleep on the weekends, even a couple hours, you actually do erase some of the negative effect. You don't necessarily erase all of it, but you get some of that sleep back. Okay, it's kind of interesting. It just has to happen within like a couple week period. So I can't tell you how many times I would lay in bed not being able to sleep, frustrated because I figured the next day was gonna be a complete waste because my metabolism would be screwed and figured that, well, this is just, just gotta chalk it up to taking some time off my life, right? Now I can sleep a little bit easier knowing that if I do have one night of poor sleep, I can work out in a specific fashion the next day 
and actually change how my metabolism is affected. Really quick, before I wrap up this video, let's dive into a little biochemistry in terms of glucose tolerance and how this works with HIT, because it's pretty fascinating. You see, the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise took a look at two groups. They took a look at a group that already had defective glucose tolerance. They didn't process glucose well. Maybe they were sick, maybe they were tired, whatever. They just were defective with glucose tolerance. Then they took a healthy group, okay? And they had them both do either high-intensity interval training or medium intensity continuous training. Here's what's intriguing though. Okay, both groups, both the defective glucose tolerant group and the regular healthy group saw the same change from the HIT. They saw the same change from high intensity interval training. Meaning even when they were sleep deprived or even when they were defective glucose tolerance, they saw benefits in insulin resistance, they saw benefits in glucose tolerance, and they saw benefits in myocardial triglyceride levels, which shows that, okay, it doesn't really matter. If you're doing hard work, you get this benefit here. However, with the medium intensity group, only the healthy group saw benefit. So that's what's kind of interesting. If you are sleep deprived and you go through sort of a, I don't know, just a half-assed workout, you end up with, well, no result out of it. You might as well have just not worked out. But if you're sleep deprived and you go and do high intensity work, then you get the benefit. It's almost like the universe is rewarding you for doing something hard. I don't know much of life that comes to us easily if we're just kind of slacking off, right? Occasionally we have to do hard things. And it doesn't mean beat the crud out of your body, but it means mentally you have to gather that fortitude, which can be the toughest thing. Because when you're sleep deprived, that's what goes first. A lot of times, and lots of military studies have found that Physical performance remains decent even when sleep deprived. It's the mental motor that shuts down and we need to somehow override that. So with mindfulness practices, whatever. But I find that just having the peace of mind in knowing that I can still achieve a metabolic benefit and it's not a complete waste, that allows me to process everything better and get through my day easier and get through that workout. So anyhow, if you're sleep deprived one or two nights a week, work hard. It's not the advice you wanna hear, but at least there's some data to back it up. We'll see you tomorrow.